our research for this season, we came across the story of Cheddar Man. He was a 10,000-year-old skeleton discovered in a cave in the southwest of England more than 100 years ago. In the late 1800s, a retired sea captain named Richard Coxco was looking to create a tourist attraction in southwest England. The area is known for its caves, and he decided to create a kind of show cave to attract people to the village of Cheddar. A few years later, in 1903, while digging a new drainage ditch, his workers came across the complete human skeleton of a young man. This skeleton would later be named Cheddar Man. This is Selena Brace, an ancient DNA researcher at the Natural History Museum in London. And the location, of course, is, is Cheddar Gorge, which is where Cheddar Man gets his name from. Um, I don't know, it's always quite interesting, I think, to know also that, actually, because like, whenever I think of cheddar, I obviously think of cheddar cheese. Yeah, this is where cheddar cheese is made. And in fact, it's actually stored in the caves where Cheddar Man was found, even to this day. It's, it's great conditions, uh, the temperature and humidity, brilliant for maturing cheese. There were actually two other touristy caves near Go's show cave, and there was a rivalry between them. For Go's family, who was now operating the cave after his death, Cheddar Man was really just a way of distinguishing themselves from the competition. So when Cheddar Man was unearthed, this was like a big boon for, for Goff's cave. So they made a really big deal out of this. In terms of the papers and the media of the time, they had lots of hand builds and postcards of the skull that was unearthed. And they kind of wheeled in a bunch of eminent archaeologists to say how important this find was from this cave. And it was generally touted in the press that he was said to be the oldest Englishman and that he was from around 80 to 40,000 years old. So he, he, uh, he created quite a storm uh, right back then. <laughs> Cheddarman was um, one of the most famous of the very old human remains that has been discovered in Britain. And because his skeleton was near complete, he is in fact the oldest near complete human skeleton found in Britain. And very early reconstructions of what Cheddar Man might have looked like gave him white skin and kind of brownish hair. This is Angela Saini, the author of Superior, The Return of Race Science. Gave him a long trailing brown moustache. Of course, we had no idea how he wore his hair or whether he had a moustache or not. But anyway, you know, it gave him pale skin, white skin, because there was this assumption that the first Europeans were white, that early Europeans 10,000 years ago, as this, and, and this skeleton is around 10,000 years old, would have been white skinned. In 2018, DNA researchers finally revealed their analysis and it blew people's minds. This field is still developing. It's still in its infancy, but it's developing. And so one of the areas that obviously people would like to be able to say something about from a DNA sample at a crime scene is what somebody's skin pigmentation is, because it's a recognisable trait. And so people have developed pieces of software that take information on different genes that we know affect skin pigmentation. And by looking at different genetic variants, they can make some kind of a prediction of somebody's skin pigmentation. Cheddar Man had blue eyes and curly dark hair and dark skin. So dark, in fact, he would probably be considered a black man by today's standards. Some people were excited. Here's a clip from The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Oh, shit! <laughs> Cheddar Man was black! <laughs> so you realize what this means? It turns out that Meghan Markle isn't entering the royal family. She's just reclaiming the throne. But other people freaked out. And, you know, it's an affront to someone's sense of racial identity if they think that to be British is to be white. Well, in fact, to learn that the first Britons were not white at all, for some people, um, was very uncomfortable. One of the researchers, Mark Thomas, was taken aback, and he shared that with our producer, Rigo. We had some strange reactions. I remember one was posted on a newspaper's comments page after the newspaper had covered the story. And it said something along the lines of, how can you tell what color skin they had from their bones? Bones are white. <laughs> That's we had worse. I should say we had worse, <laughs> but I won't repeat them because they're a really unpleasant racist uh, nature. 
Oh my god, that was pretty good. The whole thing got us thinking. Cheddar Man with his dark skin was such a big deal because it went against an origin story that people had about themselves. Accepting this man, who existed 10,000 years before we even had racial categories, meant rewriting what we think we know about society, hierarchy, and culture. It's an affront to someone's sense of racial identity if they think that to be British is to be white. Well, in fact, to learn that the first Britons were not white at all, for some people, was very uncomfortable. So these national stories that we have, these origin stories, really do matter to people, and I can understand that. Where they become troubling is when we kind of tie us our sense of self to them in an ethnic way, in a racial way or in a biological way, where we start to assume that we have innate, natural, biological qualities as a nation that makes us different. Because number one, that suggests that an outsider coming in can never really be a part of that nation. And number two, it is just factually not the case that an entire population can have a set of biological qualities that make them better than another population. I mean, that's just racism. But some people still cling to it, and especially in times of difficulty. So when a country is going through particular hardship economically or socially or politically, then people turn to these stories more, especially when people are down. When you have the very least in your life, that's when you turn to this because you have nothing else. <laughs> 